In a previous video, I posed a problem and I asked you to solve that on your own. So I thought in this video, I'd go ahead and solve it for you just to see if you, if you did it correctly. So recall that we had a force um, going to pull up a ramp here, but we're going to pull it up at an angle. And I just kind of asked you to go ahead and draw your free body diagram. And then secondly, to just kind of set up your equation. And I put fx here, or the sum of x of x, I guess. That would probably be a better way of doing it, the summation of fx. Um, but actually, as you'll see, you're going to have to actually do the sum of fy to truly, truly solve this problem. So let's go ahead and draw out our free body diagram. Um, let me pull this little guy in here. So remember from previous videos uh, for an inclined plane, you, you kind of have some basic things that you know. So the component of gravity coming down the ramp, remember this is going to be mg sine theta. And then the component of gravity coming into the ramp, this is going to be mg cosine theta. And then we have our normal force that's coming up. We're going to have, um, so it's velocity going up, so that means you're going to have a frictional force opposing that motion coming this way. Okay, and then the new thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this force here, and we're going to have to break that down into its components. So recall, part of us is pulling the block up the ramp, part of us is pulling the block up off the surface of the ramp, and you can see we have our nice little right triangle. So let's write this out as F. This is the adjacent side, so we'll write this as F cosine of alpha. And then over on this side, we're going to write this as F sine of alpha. Okay? Uh, as you can see now, this is a big old mess. So let's kind of clean this up a little bit. So let's go ahead and take this guy, let's shrink it down over here, and let's go ahead and just draw a free body just with all the major forces acting on, acting on it, okay? So here's our block. Let's just go ahead and write these out. So this we have mg sine theta. Here we have friction. These are all the forces going to the left. And then down this way, we have mg cosine theta. And then we have our normal force. And then we have the two applied forces. Actually, it's one applied force broken up into its components. So this was F cosine of alpha. And this is F sine of alpha. So this shows all the horizontal and vertical components of the forces that are acting. And it just it makes it really easy for us to do our free body diagram, uh, sorry, not our free body diagram, our uh, summation equations. So let's go ahead and do that next. So let's move this up. Let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. We'll put this over here. And then let's set up our equations. So the first one we have, when we use blue here, first one we have is our horizontal. So we'll do all our horizontal forces. And you're just going to kind of add and subtract. Look at your free body. Add and subtract all the horizontal forces. So we have one, two, three horizontal forces here. So we'll write F cosine of alpha minus mg sine theta minus friction. And that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. So let's also do our vertical summation. So sum of Fy. So in this case, again, we're just going to take all our vertical forces. So we have the normal force going up. And then we're going to subtract out. Actually, we're going to add. So notice we're pulling up a little bit on it. So we'll add F sine theta. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract mg cosine theta. Okay, this is also equal to ma. Now notice the vertical motion is zero. So this up and down motion, there is none. 
So that's going to be zero. There is no acceleration in that direction. You could conceivably stop at this point. I'm going to take it a step further because there is a nice relationship between these two. Actually, there's two nice relationships. One is that these forces are the same, right? The applied forces here. And then the second one is that friction, remember, is equal to mu times normal force. And so we can also make a substitution of the normal force into here. So let's take this a step for, uh, further here. Um, why don't we go ahead and solve for the normal force? So the normal force we could write as mg cosine theta minus f sine theta. And then let's go ahead and make that substitution up here into friction. Remember, friction is equal to mu times the normal force. All right, so let's go ahead and sub this in. So we got F cosine of alpha minus mg sine theta minus friction. So let's make the substitution. So we're going to go mu times um, mg cos theta minus, 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 right? So we have a minus here a minus here so minus minus is plus so we're going to write plus mu f sine theta remember all of this is equal to mass times acceleration let's take a conceptual step at this point because um, this is you know it's messy math but if you notice, what we're doing here is we're looking at what are the factors that drive our acceleration. And let's just look at each of these four terms one by one. So the first one is the F cosine alpha. This is basically kind of the force moving up the ramp. So the greater that is, the uh, faster, or you know, the greater the acceleration would be going up the ramp. Second component is mg sine theta. Remember, that's the opposing force. Uh, of gravity, so gravity pulling it things down the ramp, and uh, obviously that's going to decrease, so that's why you have that negative there. The next factor you have, remember this is essentially friction, so friction is going to oppose, that's why it's negative here, it's opposing that motion. Okay, so this would be this direction, and then this would be this direction as well, opposing. And then the last one, this is an interesting term. This is essentially how much you're pulling up. And what that's going to do is that's going to reduce the normal force by pulling up uh, off the surface, or not off, but you know it's reducing that normal force. By reducing the normal force, essentially what you're doing is you're reducing friction, right? So the normal force goes down. If the normal force goes down, friction goes down, and therefore uh, there's going to be less friction and there's going to be less opposing force. And that's why it's plus, because it's actually adding to the acceleration of going up the ramp. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.